Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to SEC Riga. My name is Katja Fertheim, and today I will be talking to you with our guests about what SEC Riga is all about. Um, I joined SEC Riga about three years ago. I'm the Vice President for Partnerships and Strategy. I also teach and I do my research. Uh, so I will quickly tell you about what we do today and then we move on to, with the program. So some of you might have heard about SSE Riga. For some of you, this might be the first opportunity to get a sneak peek into what we do here. Um, we will offer you more information about the program, but also through our students and alumni and lecturers, we give you um, a bit of insight, perhaps more than what we could offer on the surface. Um, you will meet faculty, students, and alumni. We show you how the school looks like because you cannot all be here due to the pandemic. Um, we will take you on a tour with a video that our students prepared. Um, I should point out that there is a live chat for those who are watching online. Uh, please feel free to ask questions. Our volunteer and second year student, Kitia, will be moderating the discussions and we will make sure to answer your questions. Um, lastly, Shall we move on with a video? Hi, welcome to SSC. Hi, we are here to ask you some questions. Sure, come in. Okay, so what's the first thing that comes in your mind when you hear the word Stockholm and School of Economics in Vegas? The first thing would have to be excellence. The second thing would have to be the craziest people I've ever met in my life. You will never meet an environment more unique than you'll meet at SSC. So what does your family think about SSC? My family honestly really likes the idea of me studying at SSC solely for the fact that they themselves had heard that it's going to be very difficult, it's going to be very time consuming and it's going to drive me crazy. So far they've not seen me try a single all-nighter, I think they know that I'm on the right path. Which was your favorite course? So far, my favorite course would have to be, I guess, ethics and sustainable business, simply because of the philosophy behind it all. I don't know, it might be just that I'm not the macroeconomics person to analyze every single number in detail, but when it comes to philosophy, SSC does it right. Oh, hi, Chrisips. Oh, hey. Can you estimate how many liters have you consumed of coffee during your first year of study at SSC Riga? Probably like too much, if you ask me, but probably around like 100 liters. Oh, hi, Akman. Hi. May I ask you a couple of questions? Yes, sure. Okay, so what's your favorite SSC Riga tradition? A long hours of studies in the lobby. What car do you plan on buying in the future? Oh, Lamborghini. Oh, maybe a blue one with SSC Riga logo? Oh. I will think about it. Okay, what's your favorite room in SSC Riga? It's Soros. Um, why Soros? Oh, uh, because it's very big and like we have many classes in the Soros, so I like it. Oh, wait, Ahmad, I have one more question. Oh, yeah, sure. What makes SSC Riga different from other universities? It's the overlap of the lectures. In the same day, you have lectures and many seminars, so that's the difference. Okay, thank you. Yeah, see you guys. What are you guys doing? Are you asking a question? <laughs> Can you estimate how many liters? <laughs> Hello and welcome back. We hope you enjoyed the video. In the next 10 minutes, I will tell you a little bit more about the program we offer here at SSC Riga before I move on and we have a chat with our faculty members and alumni about what it is like to stand in our main auditorium in Soros. Um, what does SSC Riga stand for is a question I often get from students and people I meet um, at conferences. I think what we stand for is excellence, challenge and community. Um, and of course our Swedish roots. So as the name suggests, this, we are part of the Stockholm Group with the Stockholm School of Economics and we maintain close ties with our mother school. So uh, our programs are very similar. 
we also have regular exchanges, not just in knowledge and ideas, but also interactions. Um, but back to the three strengths, challenge, excellence, and community. We are very small. This is a small and selective school. We take a limited number of students, um, students who want a challenge and who want to be excellent. As a result, we can take care of each student individually. We have academic advising. If you speak to one of our alumni students, they will tell you that they know all the students from their class. They have one-to-one -one meeting with lecturers. Um, they really benefit from the size. Our smallness is our strength. We have 450 students from 10 different countries. And our faculty, the core faculty here, comes from um, around the world. So we have people from the US, Denmark, Hungary, France. And apologies for the nationalities I'm forgetting. France, France I've forgotten. Um, so we are truly international. We also offer exchanges. About a third of our class goes on exchanges every year. Obviously, this year is different, but we hope to get back to where, the time where we can travel. Uh, you can take an exchange program anywhere in Europe, also in the US, South America, or Hong Kong. Um, having said that, it's not all about the fun. I hope you get the chance to talk to one of our students through a shadow day or just uh, coming to one of our events in the future. And they will tell you, we work hard. This is an intense program. We offer 55 courses, um, which are a mix of quantitative and qualitative courses. Um, and there's a lot of studying. Hopefully our students later, and I'm looking at them, which is why I'm not looking at the camera, uh, will also tell you about partying hard. Um, we also, it's not just about the studies. Our students participate in programs. They are active members of the Alumni Association. They work with our alumni. Our alumni community is growing. We have about 2,500 alumni all over the world. Um, and they do mentor, give internships, and work with our students. So once, become, once a member of the SSE community, you will always be a member of the SSE community. What we do here actually links back to the core mission of SSE Riga. We were established over 30 years ago by the Stockholm School of Economics to contribute to the economic, social, and democratic development of the region. And this is still true today. Um, Part of it is about making it accessible for everyone. So you can come to our public events or just tune in on our podcast. But also, we are very mindful that once you get an offer, this school should be accessible for everyone. So we have a no large number of scholarships for top performing students, for international students, for students um, who win specific competitions, etc. Our alumni community also supports our students, so first-year Estonian students, um, they don't pay a tuition fee. Uh, Baltic students, in fact, receive a tuition fee waiver automatically, which is a scholarship, in effect, that reduces the tuition fee by a third immediately. Um, we also offer, and yes, we are a business school, so we talk about money bank loans. And often, we guarantee the loans by SSE Riga. That means your parents, or you yourself, if you're above 18, don't have to take, sign the loan, they sign it for you. Uh, that is because we know that uh, our students pay back the loan within six or seven years. The average is actually six and a half years. Um, what you will notice is that you will be studying here a lot, and so will, you will read a lot of books, you will use a lot of databases, of which my colleagues will talk more. None of these you will have to pay for, we must point out. All our resources are included in the tuition fee already. Um, so some of you might be thinking, jumping ahead, how can I apply? Bear with us for another few minutes, but we basically run a three-step application process. You apply, the application platform is open, and we will 
encourage you and post the link on how to do it. Second, once you apply it, we will invite you for a test. You take the test and then selected candidates will be invited for an interview. After the interview, you receive your offer along with a scholarship if you offer if you get one. Um, so it's quite easy. It doesn't take um, a lot of time, but we we'll require a few cups of tea to get through it. Um, but obviously there's a lot more we could talk about when it comes to the program practical matters and also more about our learning and philosophy. I will not go into an other monologue around this. Instead, I suggest we watch an other video and then we invite my colleagues to share their insight into what it is like to teach at SEC Riga. If you have questions in the meantime, feel free to use our live chat and also don't forget forget to check out our website ssseriga.edu Oh hi Sanders, what are you working on? Uh, mathematics. Um, may I ask you a couple of questions? Yeah, sure, go ahead. Um, what do your friends think about SSC Riga? They think I'm crazy. <laughs> uh, most of them live in Canada, but they think I'm crazy for going to a difficult school like this. What's your favorite eating place around here? It's got to be food box. I mean, it's cheap, it's really good, and uh, really close by. If SSC Riga was a food, what would it be? I would say it's more like a drink, and it would be a combination of Red Bull and a really strong coffee. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Oh, hi. Hey. What's your favorite spot in SSC Riga? Actually, this one. This is a balcony right above our library. What's the best thing you've learned during your first year of studies at SSC Riga? I had a course negotiations and there I learned how to win an argument. Oh, that sounds interesting. Um, what about films? If SSC Riga was a movie, what would it be? It would be Mission Impossible, definitely. Why so? Because it is a Mission Impossible. Okay. Lig, it's nearly six o'clock. What have you been doing? I've been studying math. Why? Because I have an exam coming up. Well, that doesn't sound a lot of fun. Um, I will ask you a couple of questions about our school. Feel free to answer. Okay, sure. So, what do you think about the school itself? It's really hard work, but in the end, it's worth it. What has been your favorite memory so far? Having a essay event in one evening and starting out the next morning with a new topic in programming. Do you have any scholarships? No, no I don't. Oh, I do, I do. Okay, so tell me, what's your secret? Well, I think you just have to combine everything. I did not only just study, but I also participated in a lot of uh, different SI organized events, and I was involved in many organizations, and I, am, I still am, despite being a year two student and being busy. Oh, hi, Luis. Hey. May I ask you a couple of questions about the life in SSE Riga? Sure. Uh, okay, which SSE event was the one you will never forget? Um, the new Scottish camp, definitely. Which was your favorite course? I think it would be either macroeconomics or financial economics. What's the longest time you've spent in SSC Riga premises? 20 hours. 20 hours? Yeah, so it's the maximum time you can actually spend in SSC Riga because school opens at 6 a.m. and it closes at 2 a.m. So yeah, 20 hours. Okay, that sounds a bit crazy. Thank you. You're welcome. Welcome back. We heard there were some questions. We are very excited about maybe answering them after this part of the afternoon. For now, allow me to introduce our guest, Konstantin Zbankovitskis. Correct. Almost, uh, almost correct who is a lecturer in econometrics, international economics, economic specialization, and don't forget market research. And Richard Garant, we are also sharing him with the Bank of Latvia. And Richard Garant, who is actually our alumni, and he is our artificial intelligence, machine learning, and business 
analytics lecturer. He also runs his own consultancy and is doing his MBA at the moment, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Welcome. It's really nice to have you here. Um, Constantine, can you tell us a little bit about the curriculum at SSC Riga? Well, it's quite difficult to tell in five minutes, but first Please. of all, it's very diversified. So it's not just economics, not just finance, not just business, it's all together. Because, uh, well, what is our final goal? Our final goal is to produce business leaders, right? Of course, we have a lot of alumni who are now leading analysts of you know, commercial banks. So we have a lot of people uh, working in the state sector. But the main goal is to create people who can change the world, right? And uh, for that, you need to know everything, but basically everything, economics, finance, business. And that's why we have a lot of different pillars. So, for example, we have finance and accounting. So, of course, uh, you need to know accounting to do business, but also you need to understand uh, financial and capital markets. You need to know how to get financing for your business, so when do you need to do it, uh, from whom. Uh, on top of that, of course, you have core business uh, courses uh, if you want to motivate uh, your employees, we have human, uh, human resource management. Uh, if you need to do to improve organization, we have management and organization. Of course, also, it is impossible to do business without understanding economics. Uh, for example, what happens if you have a, a situation like now when you have COVID uh, pandemics, and that's why we have microeconomics, macroeconomics, international economics, of course. But perhaps the closest to me is uh, the last pillar, which is uh, which we can call quantitative, or we can call it also data analysis. And both of us actually represent this uh, field. And uh, so, of course, uh, the world becomes more and more quantitative. We, we have more and more data around us. It's just everywhere. And we need to use this data properly to improve our business, to improve our uh, economics to improve our living standards, of course. And, um, well, uh, I mentioned data analysis, which is one buzzword, of course, but it is not the last buzzword I should use uh, because I would say that alumni of our school can proudly tell that they know machine learning. Another thing everyone talks about, not so many people understand really what it means. What is it, machine uh, learning? That's teaching machines to do something more efficiently and quicker than we can do. So, for example, um, I don't know, you want to apply for a loan. Some 10 years later, you go, you meet your, uh, you meet the manager, and then you describe what is your income, what is your family status, and so on, and then you have a decision. Now you simply can go to the web page of the bank, and you fill the form saying, what is your income, uh, what, is your, uh, what is your family status, what is your profession, etc., etc., age. And then you automatically, in no time, get an answer that, yes, we can grant you the loan, or no, we don't, uh, what is the interest rate. So it looks like a black magic, like how it happens. And that's exactly what we teach, this black magic. So how to create a program that can make this decision. And um, we, have, we don't have just one single course which is devoted to that. We have series of courses, uh, series of courses. Of course, everything starts with mathematics, but we also have a lot of uh, programming because you cannot really do it without programming. So we teach some basics in a very popular software R. And by the way, it's a very um, demanded skills from uh, the point of view of, uh, of employers. So Can it will improve your CV a lot, yes? Can we get back to R later? Because sure. I actually have a good question about it for, to both of you. Okay. But you're also involved in some soft courses. Yes. It's not all about the numbers, yes, isn't it? Yes, yes, yes. No, it is still about the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we have some core courses about the numbers, like statistics, econometrics, and uh, I should... Uh, I should stress that it is not only theoretical, so of course you will have a lot of formulas in this course. But uh, what is even more important, uh, we will teach you how to make the actual data analysis using up-to-date softwares, using 
real data sets. And that's basically what we do in seminars in statistics and econometrics. And indeed, it's not only about that. Because our idea is that uh, also courses which are seemingly not related to numbers, they can also gain from, from machine learning, as we can call it now. So for example, market research, which we teach together. Um, so it's related to marketing, something you don't really associate with something really quantitative, right? But what we do there, it is um, uh, we provide a lot of different skills related to market research, including how to make the surveys, how to create a questionnaire, uh, how to address the people you would like to survey. And after that, when you collect this data, so now already it, it is more numerical, and then again you use some elements of machine learning technique to apply it and to present your findings uh, to the audience. And in our course, um, we have several companies which are working with us. They provide the questions to which they want to find the answer and our students answer that mm -hmm. question using both qualitative and quantitative techniques. Indeed they do. And Richard, what is your view, take on this? Because it's indeed not just about the data, but the cycle around it, right? Yeah, uh, I think what I can add in terms of the qualitative part is that we don't have just quantitative, qualitative things, but we also have life skills that, we, uh, that are intertwined throughout the whole years. We have, for example, business and leadership skills that are running throughout the three years. And this is the place where we uh, give some personal life lesson skills that are very important in our, in our life, not only in our life, but in our business, such as personal finance, wealth building, motivation, goal setting, emotional intelligence, presentation skills. This will be something that you will encounter in the business no matter what do you do, no matter what kind of career you choose. Uh, and we're trying to intertwine them everything together so that that seemingly goes together. The same thing with R, it's through multiple courses. It's not just one specific course, but it's intertwined throughout the whole curriculum. And in terms of the data cycle, uh, I think now because uh, data is something that drives our business performance and what data tries to do, we, we try to do to teach our students is that from that data they can make business decisions. And what is the best, what I tell all, all, to all of my students is that uh, you need to have experience to go somewhere in, inside business. But when you have data, you can prove your point with that data and you can actually influence business decisions even though you're just a junior. And I've seen many of my students who have been, been able to do that just because they understand how they can translate data into business decisions. So it's not just about numbers but influencing as well. Yeah. And did you learn to do this at SSC Riga? Because you're an alumni from a few years back, right? Yeah, I'm alumni from 10 years back, I think. <laughs> And unfortunately, none of these courses were there, so I had to grind my way through it. And I remember I also told that that if I would have had these courses uh, in my when I was studying, I would have progressed in my career two years much quicker than I than I than I did because I had to learn it from myself and learn it the hard way. I had to understand that these are important skills in the job market that that were just uh, that were needed for me to actually progress somewhere and uh, we're happy, I'm very happy that we're actually teaching that that's in, in right now in high demand for I mean businesses across the board. Mm -hmm. So it's actually something that employers demand from yeah. recent graduates. Um, I think even I get quite excited about R and programming now but could you tell us a couple of examples of from real life about how, how this might be used? Either of you. You'll start. Okay, so uh, one thing that we can do, we just discussed that, uh, with the help of R, we can predict what will be the future number of cases in a certain period of time, uh, so we can use that. Another one that uh, we teach with artificial intelligence, especially now due to, with the US election and with a lot of uh, controversy around COVID, uh, we teach uh, AI can uh, spot fake news based on how much it's trending, where's the source, yeah, I can tell you that this is the fake news and, and this, you can discern that from fake news and real news. We have a question from the floor before Constantine asks. You're talking about machine learning, but I can't see such program on the list. What is the name of the program when student asks? All right. Uh, the machine learning is actually intertwined in many courses, such as econometrics, such as artificial intelligence. And uh, what we do, we try to apply it through different aspects into different perspectives. So that's why you will not see it, but it will be in multiple courses you will see that. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, exactly. Uh, you will have a lot of it in econometrics. You will have a lot of it in market research. Machine learning is just a general name for many different, many different techniques. Uh, continuing with examples, so uh, one of the examples I have already mentioned uh, how to determine whether the person applying for a loan can actually get, uh, uh, can actually repay it. So that's serious economic example. To, uh, to provide you a fun example, which we have in our lectures and seminars, you can also predict what is the probability for DiCaprio to survive on Titanic. So if you're interested in this, please uh, apply. But there is one thing I want, yes. There's just one question again from students. They are very interested in what you are talking about. But someone is worried that she or he has no programming experience. What do you think? What would be your recommendation? Will, I, will they be able to pass a programming course? Well, that's exactly what I wanted to tell uh, right now. So first, you don't need any uh, prior experience. Of course, if you have one, it will help you, but you don't uh, need any prior experience. And I want to state it clearly. We're not going to make uh, IT specialists and coders out of you. What we try to, uh, to get is that our alumni are educated users of this particular technique. So, of course, we, create, we, we want to create business leaders. Of course, of course, those business leaders will not code themselves. They will not collect data. But they need a deep understanding how it works. So, of course, uh, big, uh, the director of big business, he will hire someone to do this job, uh, uh, to make a report on the market, uh, something about the market. But if you understand how the analysis is performed, you can ask the right questions and you can tell whether this analysis which you obtained is qualitative or not. So that's our final goal. So you understand how it works. It's not just a black box. It's not black magic to you. Talking of black magic, can I add something? It's not just about the numbers. I need to speak up for the qualitative people <laughs> who work at SSC. It's not just about the numbers because insight, and we sometimes disagree within the faculty, it's not just about the numbers, but also about how you understand people and society. So we teach about sustainability, which I'm sure our students will talk about later, about behavioral sciences. Even anthropology made it to the list, because without understanding the world you live in, uh, you cannot use this data efficiently. That's what we believe. Um, I know you wanted to speak something, but I have a burning sure. question to sure. you. Could you two, maybe you as, from your perspective also, as an alumni who came back, tell me more about the study process? Because I think we talk about these big ambitious courses, but perhaps the listeners would benefit from how we teach this. All right. Uh, uh, one thing what is discerning us from other, other schools is that we have a module system. So that means we have running a couple of courses in parallel, uh, but not all of them. So you take one course, uh, you finish that with an exam, and you move on to the next course. The second thing, it's intertwined with both lectures case studies and seminars. So that meaning you have the theory, you have some practical application from real life examples, and you apply that in, inside seminars so you can know how to apply that knowledge. Uh, and lastly, I think it's both individual and teamwork. We are trying to foster teamwork and making sure that you know, whatever you do uh, is done uh, uh, not only individually, but you can actually work in a team. And lastly, uh, we also have a lot of uh, research papers that you have to do. So ma that means you combine everything together. You have combining your skills and you apply that into a sustainable uh, piece of work that you pr usually do in most of the courses that we have. Thank you. Constantine? Well, I uh, definitely have less experience since I, uh, I can tell you a secret. Uh, I applied to SSC Riga back in the middle of 90s, but I wasn't able to get in, so it shows you uh, the, level of, uh, the level of competition and the quality. Uh, but what uh, I can add as well is that uh, the study process is organized in, in blocks, so it's not like in many other universities that you have one course starting in September and ending in uh, mid-December. So you have, uh, for example, econometrics twice a week. No, you have one course uh, for four weeks or maybe even eight weeks, depending on, uh, uh, on the course, and you have it every day. 
So you have lectures, then you can have seminars, then you can have uh, assignments and something like that. So it also teaches you to plan your time because very often you have more than one such course in parallel. So um, although it is not stated explicitly, but if you, if you are able to finish uh, Stockholm School of Economics and Riga, you also have very nice uh, time management skills. Thank you. Um, are there any questions from the chat before I move on to my next? Good. Um, just a second. I like that there are so many questions. Okay, Constantine, I think you will, you get to answer this question first. If you were a high school student again, would you go to, would you again apply to SSC Riga or would you go somewhere else? Well, as you know, I already failed once, but I would definitely try another time. Why? Well, still it is, uh, it is definitely a better, it is the best uh, school in business and economics in the Baltics, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm still interested in business and economics, so it's an obvious choice for me. Thank you. How about you? I mean, yeah. you got in? Yeah, I, I got in, but I mean, definitely, if I would be, I think that's uh, one of my most important lectures that I've ever made, that, that uh, actually defines me who I am now, and uh, that has made me so far as I'm here. I would definitely apply once again, and I think even even today with my current mindset, uh, even if I would choose between uh, something that's going uh, going out in a foreign country and studying in a, in a top university somewhere else, or going in mm -hmm. in the Baltics, for me it would be a clear business case and a clear winning case why I'd study here, mm -hmm. simply because uh, the the cost that's involved, then the uh, academic excellence that you receive here uh, in SC Riga, even comparatively to others, to other universities, even I have been studying in multiple universities uh, and right now being both in Paris and in Singapore, I can uh, really uh, level it out that actually SRIG has this academic excellence and the challenge that's there. And lastly, just the return on investment you get from SSRIG is just so much more higher than going in a high cost country. Can you talk a little bit more about that return of investment? What do you really mean by it? Uh, what I mean by it is how much I would have to pay for studies plus the living expenses, uh, compare, and then compare that to the job prospects that I have. And as you may know that not only, first of all, you would have with SC Riga Diploma, you would have excellent uh, job market opportunities on so getting a high paid job right from the start, but also there are multiple alumni, including myself, that has been even working outside, uh, outside the country. So in, in Western Europe, so you don't have to have a Western European degree to, to study uh, outside of Europe, outside of the uh, Baltics. Thank you. And then this is a question related to studying further. A lot of the students see the bachelor's degree as the first step towards further education. What is your experience? I mean, we know the numbers. Our students go to LSE, Harvard, Oxford, etc. But in your experience, does SSC Riga prepare them for further education, be that an MA or a PhD? As, as I'm studying now MBA, definitely yeah. I can say that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm more than prepared. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the level of the, the yeah, not only preparedness, but also the understanding that you can do when you go in the high level schools, top 10 schools in the world, you can easily uh, be able to be competitive enough and grab all the, the necessary concepts. It's like a very good foundation for you to, to move forward. Anything to add? I would to add that, uh, yeah, definitely it, it, it prepares, but what is uh, also important due to the fact that we have both economics and business, uh, you can, after two or three years, you can decide whether you want to go more into business and then you go to MBA or whether you want to do more economics and then you can apply to universities like Bocconi, for example, mm -hmm. in Italy, which is one of the most which is one of the top universities in Europe. So you really have this flexibility. You are not stuck into either business or economics. Thank you. Another question. Wow. I have a couple of questions here about the admission process, but maybe I just answer those at the end of the session so we don't interrupt this conversation. Um, I have 
Maybe two more questions to you. What is your favorite experience at SSC Riga? Either as a faculty or an alum, and definitely as a faculty. What is it that, you know, for me, it's actually stepping into Soros and, and, and starting a new course. I love doing the first course and seeing the 150 students, the 130, and getting to introduce them to something new. Mm. What, is it, what is it for you? I think for me, the only thing that comes to my mind is actually when students uh, write to me and they thank me for the course uh, that I've ta taught them, for the skills, and then they tell, show me how they have applied it or how much that has shaped their career. So for me, that's, that's just the highest uh, sense mm -hmm. of recognition that I could have. I think it's the same as for you. It's teaching in Soros or even online uh, because, uh, well, the best way to understand something is to teach. Thank you. And we've been teaching online and also in person. Can you very briefly comment on that, on how, how you develop your courses so we, we adapt to this new way of, hopefully, temporary way of life? I mean, we do whatever it takes to make it a seamless, seamless transition mm -hmm. so that there's no loss in terms of uh, the quality in terms of the content, in terms of the engagement. Uh, so we try to devise everything so that it's as seamless as possible. Yes, of course, it's a constraint because we don't have this uh, live communication with, uh, with students, but uh, at least we have the chat option in Zoom. So uh, otherwise, it's organized as before. We, uh, you see the blackboard with, uh, with some slides, maybe some formulas, uh, of course, with the comment from the lecturer, and then instead of live conversation, it, uh, there is a possibility to ask questions via chat like we do today, for example. Thank you. Well, un unless you have some very important things we missed, I would like to thank you for joining us today. Thank you. I feel like I learned a lot about R and business analytics myself, and I hope many of our students are inspired. If that's OK, I just, I'm just going to answer a couple of questions from the chat about admissions and tests. And then uh, we will show another video. So we have what very, very concrete question. What if I get disconnected during the admission test because it's online? Uh, don't worry. We were prepared for that last year as well. Um, we have IT support and we help you fix it. Also, we are uh, recording everything via video. Our software does that. So uh, you will not be disadvantaged. But we ask you to have a stable internet connection and try it out before that. So don't try to do it from the car driving to your countryside house. Not, not a good idea. Um, why do we only have one bachelor's program? We believe that our bachelor's program covers both the quantitative as and the qualitative sides, and we see it as our mission to create a holistic knowledge, which, is, which links not just to academic knowledge, but also insight and connections to real-world examples and businesses. And we believe by combining soft courses and what we call here hard courses, we can do that. We create uh, people who, who can talk about marketing, but also understand data. Of course, you might choose to specialize more on marketing if that's your interest, and you will have the opportunity to do that in your third year. If you're interested in entrepreneurship, we have specializations in that. But you will have a very solid base in all these topics. And that relates to another question I have. How much time proportionally is spent on soft skill courses? Whose time? Is it the student's time or the um, or our time? I don't know the exact proportions. That's probably because I'm a qualitative person here. But uh, what I would say is that um, in terms of the foundation, it's about half and half. You can develop them further your interests. Uh, so if you are more interested in the soft course side of things, you can take more, more soft courses. Um, but also, there is not that clear division here at SSC Riga. As Konstantin said, we do market research and then we work together. So we try to integrate what is sort of the more soft side of management with the economic side. Is there an option to get a scholarship? Yes, there are loads of scholarships. Last year we distributed around 34 scholarships, that, so that's about 
25%, again, numbers, funny, uh, of our students got a scholarship. Uh, you don't need to apply for it. You automatically apply for a scholarship with your application at SSC Riga. However, if you're interested in it more, please have a look on our website. We have a detailed description of our scholarships. Uh, these are not based on any criteria that is not listed, so it's about top performers, international students, and our alumni association often of, or offers scholarships as well. I think for the last question, what is the grading system for Indian students? May I advise you to uh, contact our bachelor's recruitment officer, Daiga Brockman, who will be answering your questions in detail. So thank you for our speakers, and I think Thanks. we will move on to the video now. Thank you. Hello and welcome back. Here in the SEC studio, we have two students with us, Sarah and Eric. Would you like to introduce yourself in just a sentence? Okay, so hi, I'm Sara Zdanowska, um, and I'm the president of a student association in SSC Riga, and I'm very happy to be here today. A little bit nervous, but uh, <laughs> still happy. Yeah, and my name is Eric Kristons. Uh, I am also a student of SSE Riga. I am also a part of the SSE Riga Student Association Board as uh, the chairperson of the sports committee. Thank you. Um, could you tell a little bit more about yourself and your journey to SSE Riga? We kind of have um, a similar story. We both come from the same high school. Um, I'm personally interested in politics and I actually want to do that after I graduate. However, I think obviously for a good politician you kind of have to know something about economics. So naturally <laughs> I applied to SSC Riga and uh, here I am. So yeah. yeah. And I personally wasn't that sure with what I wanted to do in the future. Uh, I knew I liked mathematics. Uh, and that's why I also thought that SSC Riga is a good choice because first of all there's a lot of maths involved and that sort of thinking. And the second reason is that this is quite a universal education, as you uh, mentioned. We cover a lot of skills and mm -hmm. uh, assets of this side, uh, the business and economics side. So I thought it's a, it's a good option, and that's why I applied. It's funny that you're from the same high school. Have you met many people from different backgrounds since you started the school? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, plenty, plenty. Yeah, like we didn't know that there are so many people in Latvia. <laughs> Yeah, and not only Latvian international students yeah, as well, obviously. of course. And then, uh, yeah, their, their backgrounds are much different. Of course, they both mostly also come from good schools, but the way they get, get to know about SSC Riga is also different. There are student ambassadors who go there and they see it online. And again, I think generally, because this is the best uh, business school in the Baltics, that's why mostly Estonians and Lithuanians get to know about it, and of course, all the countries around us mm -hmm. as well. Thank you. So what do you think makes SSC Riga a good choice for students in general or for you if you want to talk about that? Um, well, I personally think that 
the network here is incredible. Like, uh, I know several, my friends are studying abroad in uh, several good universities. However, they are quite big and basically they don't know all of the people that study there. However, once you come to SSC Riga, you know everyone. You know all the people from second year and third year. You know the faculty. It's just like having a really close and kind of big, but at the same time, small family. So I think it's the biggest asset and something I really like about this university. Yeah, I would definitely agree about the networking, about the contacts that we will get. And uh, after we graduate and go on to work, if we want to make ourselves our own business, uh, then all the contacts definitely will help. And also, yeah, the international uh, environment, the abroad students, you get to know more about other cultures and other, other people from different countries. And it's overall a very enjoyable and sort of different experience. Talking of contacts, uh, students have to take two internships, mandatory internships as part of their studies. Um, do you have an internship experience already? Well, this year was uh, different uh, from other years. So my internship this year was being a president. <laughs> and I actually, it was interesting because not only, um, as usually students get the internship, I was the one who gave the internship. So people were kind of working for me. <laughs> So it was, uh, again, interesting experience and maybe very unusual for SSC Riga. Yeah, I also didn't have the traditional internship, as you would say, but I have had the experience because of SSC in accounting, a little bit of that. And uh, about the other students as well, there's plenty of students who had the regular internships in many big companies in Rimi and in others as well, and then in different positions, and it was excited to hear about it. Yeah, thank you. Um, what do you like most about the atmosphere in the school? Again, as I previously said, that this close mm -hmm. community is really amazing. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously our events are something extraordinary. I don't know any other university that has like a bull riding machine in the yard during an event. I, I don't know any other <laughs> university that has parties like we do. So that's the this crazy spirit of the community, you know, we're all working hard and after, afterwards we're having a great uh, party, partying hard, so yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. The, the, the close community, the fact that if you, you need to do an assignment or something like that, if you do it at school you can see other people doing it as well and you get the feeling of we're all in this mm -hmm. together. Uh, you can also ask for help to many of the peers because everyone's very helpful and friendly. And then, then overall, there's so many activities to do. I myself, as a sports committee chairperson, uh, know that there's also a lot of weekly practices that you can go to in terms of sports, which is all for free, uh, provided for students. And other activities as well, other organizations and student association. There's just so much to do. Everyone can find something for themselves, and it just enhances the experience. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the elephant of the, in the room. Obviously, this year is a little bit different. A yes. lot of what we do is online. A lot of everything is online. What, how do you experience the sort of hybrid education? Some of the lectures are online, whereas the seminars in person. Well, I'm personally a big fan of online studies. It, I guess it depends kind of on person, but I think it's just great because you can easily manage your own time. You can decide how better to study for something. And in case something happens, obviously life is unpredictable. And in case you cannot get to, for example, a lecture or a seminar later on, they are all recorded. So you can check out them. And uh, even if you see something in a lecture and then think, OK, I understood that. All good. And then you do, I don't know, like a task at home. And then you start to understand that maybe you didn't understand easily. Just open uh, the e-learning site and just click on the lecture and just watch it again and it's all good. So I personally really, really enjoy it. Maybe sometimes it's harder with the motivation aspect because you don't have to come here, you don't have to sit in Soros. That, we're missing obviously that and uh, we miss seeing everyone each day, but uh, but I think we have adapted quite well. Yeah, yeah. Think? It is rather unusual, of course. Uh, everything that she mentioned, plus you get to experience a different side of your own time management because 
even though you seem to have all the time in the world that you want now, uh, actually it's much different and you have to really think what you have to do and when. Uh, plus, uh, in terms of adaptation, you have to adapt and I think that the school in general has also adapted very well um, because they, uh, even though our, our school is very cautious bec uh, because of the situation, we still have uh, ongoing uh, seminars on site as well, which is rather unusual at this current moment. All the other universities seem to have everything online, uh, but we still have some seminars on site, which is great uh, that we still get to experience at least some kind of the community mm -hmm. vibe. That's four year ones, uh, I think, especially important yeah. Yeah. since they don't really feel the same atmosphere we felt in the beginning, but still true. they're getting the closest thing I think they can get during this time. So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Talking of time management, I have a question. Yes. Um, someone is asking, do you have any hobbies and how do you have the time for them? Well, <laughs> I'm personally, I could say, kind of blessed that I have a hobby uh, student association. So, I I think I can manage that. I'm still here, still passing courses. I mean, <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. Sometimes you're sitting in the middle of the night and thinking, oh my God, where have I gotten myself into? But then you start to do more and more. And the more you do, the more you actually can do. And you understand that, wow, I'm proud of myself. I did this. So yeah, I guess my hobby is definitely student association and uh, all this uh, event conducting and everything, so yeah. Um, yeah, I, I because, well, I'm a sports committee chairperson, therefore <laughs> I also do sports. Uh, I, I play football, but I haven't done it for quite a while now due to health issues, but in general I knew that because of SSC I had to give up something. You have to set your priorities straight. And then, then if you really want to, you can manage everything, but uh, I, I wouldn't advise uh, really, really having an important hobby and mix that with the, uh, with the university because it is hard, obviously. But uh, if it's a, like a little hobby just for fun, you can definitely manage that. I also like to sing in a choir and I joined the SSC Riga Choir, which sort of has the best of both worlds. And then uh, it's, it's doable, but definitely challenging. I will not ask you to sing now, <laughs> but Thank there's God. another question about the SA election. Yes. How do they happen? Can you just briefly describe the experience to our viewers? Ooh, <laughs> that oh, was a yours. crazy time, I must admit. It was, uh, so basically the elections happen uh, once a year. Every year is elected a new board and we are actually coming close to our uh, our end of the term and the new elections and um, you have to be a year one student to participate in elections because during the second year we have this very crazy course uh, financial economics so obviously we have to put um, all our priorities straight to that subject and uh, therefore yeah we Second year students give uh, the floor to first year students, and uh, yeah. And uh, the whole ex election experience we have a campaign week. You need to promote yourself, you need to talk to everyone in the university, ask them how they are feeling, what can you change, and it's again networking, great networking. And then comes the actual presenting and you just have to stand in front of the whole school. Everyone can ask you questions. It's really terrifying and people are actually looking at your social media as well. It's like experience real life elections. So you just feel everything on your own skin. <laughs> and uh, afterwards, I think you get this experience also. You think, oh, I can survive anything. <laughs> and it's definitely a great feeling to get the position as well while going through all of it. So yeah. Definitely improves a lot of important skills for your life and mm -hmm. career as well, such as presentation and the networking and just, just understanding that, that the whole life is not you know, sun, sun and flowers and it's not all good. Definitely people will judge you and look at your uh, weaknesses and then you have to improve that. And I think the whole election process is a bit tough, but definitely helps you in life. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I got a question here about um, not just about what it is like to study at SSC Riga, but many of our listeners are not from Riga. Mm -hmm. So what does it cost to live in Riga? What, do you know anyone who, because you're from Riga, right? Yes. Do you know anything about this? 
We know, although we're both still living in our parents' homes, <laughs> we still uh, know from our uh, course mates and our dear friends how they are living. Uh, there's obviously the possibility to live in the dorms and the price, if I'm not mistaken, is approximately from 100 to 160 to live there. Something about those numbers, so pretty affordable. Um, and uh, other students uh, just find their, like, uh, I know that Lithuanians have their own small communities and then they're just uh, finding an apartment. Usually Lithuanians are finding an apartment nearby <laughs> university, so we're kind of laughing that they're bougie. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they are student groups that just simply find an apartment nearby university and just rent it and it's also pretty affordable. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and during and normal times, like where do you eat? Tell us a little bit yes. about the infrastructure around student life. Um, so food, uh, well, if it wasn't pandemic, we would have a cafeteria downstairs, which is also pretty affordable. Uh, do you remember the prices there? <laughs> like three euros, four euros, depending on what you get. There's always the, 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 the meal <laughs> sort of. <laughs> Thingies. And then, then a, a lot of students who, I don't know, live either in apartments or uh, in the dorms also make their own food. They go to the store, they have the kitchen there, and the, a lot of people I know I've seen prepare their meals at home and take to school, which is, of course, even cheaper. So that's all doable. Um, and yeah, we have a, a few places around the school as well where you can go which are not too, 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 too expensive, and I think it's all doable. It definitely doesn't exceed any, like, five, six euro threshold. So it's, I think, all good. Thank you. Um, let's get a little bit personal. We have some questions around that. Um, can you tell your favorite impression or memory or anecdote about SSE Riga, some, Riga, something you will cherish, you think, for the rest of your life? Mm, it's hard to really choose like one memory. Oh, uh, I guess regarding uh, student life more, for me, definitely, it, it it's all it's hard to just choose one event. There are several events, and just you know, cool part obviously is the event, making it and everything. But once the event ends, also, for example, Christmas ball, you have been preparing for such a long time for this event, and you have an amazing, unforgettable night. But what comes afterwards is like the cleaning, for example, work, and it's actually for me, it's a great memory. Uh, this year, we found socks on the dance floor. Who forgot the socks on the dance floor? I'm still thinking about it sometimes. <laughs> so yeah, those are those uh, small memories that just sometimes you remember something think, who, who left the socks? <laughs> so that's one thing. And from lectures uh, and lectures, I think, uh, I think we have great memories yeah. with uh, our lecturer Morton. Um, he showed us memes uh, about Venezuela and printing money, so, <laughs> so we sometimes also like uh, make a reference to those jokes, so yeah. Yeah, his lectures are always enjoyable, he always mixes in, mix in some jokes and then it's always a good memory and it's pleasant to go to lectures, not only for the education but for the person that the Morton is as well. What I could also add, which is also not a specific memory, but what I like about the whole community is that a lot of people tend to be table football enthusiasts and every time between lectures or in the breaks of lectures they just run to the, straight to the leisure room where there are two table food, food, football uh, well, tables and they, and they play it and there's so many enthusiasts and then it's also sort of a going, I don't know, anecdote or a joke mm -hmm. that many people just always play it, they spend the whole day uh, there in the room and then yeah there's just many things to do in school as well to take a break from studies. Yeah, and if you lose, then you have to go under the table. I have not lo if you lose by not yeah, scoring not a goal. Not scoring a goal, yeah. then you have to sit under the table. I have sit in there, so. Okay, <laughs> hope there are pictures to see. I have two questions from the students uh, watching us. Um, one is tricky, the other one is easier. Okay. How much time do you spend a day studying? Okay. Honestly. Okay. Um, I guess it depends on the day. I, I actually have never sit, uh, sitting down and just counted how many hours I'm studying. Obviously, uh, some courses are easier, some courses are harder, some, they, some weeks are harder, some weeks are easier. Um, but uh, currently, I would say these past weeks have been pretty tough, I would say. We have uh, deadlines all the time, so um, 
maybe from nine till well approximately seven I've have been studying for the past days but the but that's just this week I guess and in the morning to seven in the evening yes but these are the tough weeks what do you have on which courses we have human uh, resource management we had the project there we had to film videos so obviously that's pretty time consuming um, we have econometrics now <laughs> so that's also um, Pretty time consuming because uh, I'm personally going after the lectures also through everything again to understand fully everything. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, for me, I haven't really perfected my own routine or time management, unfortunately. So it also depends. If so sometimes I do tend to not really focus on the on the course at the first during the first weeks, and then I tend to study more. Uh, just be well, not just before the exam, but in the weeks prior to the exam. And, Therefore, the time uh, taken during these days is much more, but I would say on average, if you, if you do start in a timely manner, it could be like three to four hours uh, a day, but again, it depends whether there's two or three courses uh, at the time or just one, and then, yeah, I would say the, no, no, the five, six hours perhaps on average would be the ideal. Mm -hmm. Plus lectures and seminars or yeah. including? I would say plus, again, depends how many in, in the day there are. There's really not really one number, but uh, well, you have to definitely study uh, at least two hours a day, I would say, definitely to, to yeah. If you're improve smart, something. then two hours. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, everyone has their own routines and, and, and ways to, that they study. It's really uh, study. a hard question. Yeah, it is a tough question to answer, yeah. The next one is the easy one. Oh, so, <laughs> of course, you've never failed an exam. But some students <laughs> fail exams. What happens if an SSC Riga student fails an exam? It's obviously, it's a little heartbreaking. <laughs> <laughs> Not from my personal experience, no. <laughs> but uh, I think uh, everyone has to go their own path in SSC Riga. If you fail a subject, it's not the end of the world. Obviously, it's painful, especially if you know you have studied a lot. But at the same time, I personally think of it as, uh, okay, I didn't pass it this time, but maybe because, I don't know, 10 years afterwards, I will need really to know, how, for example, how the balance sheet balances, and I won't be able to do it because I passed it randomly, and I rather than just, you know, study harder and pass the next time, so. Yeah. And I think that you meant the technical side of it, which is if you fail, you have a re-exam. Yeah. Uh, which is a few months after the exam, and if you fail the re-exam, then you have to take it again next year with the uh, next, I don't know, year ones or year twos, which is the course below you. And, uh, well, if you don't pass it again, you just <laughs> go again <laughs> until you do pass the course, so no one is really thrown out for not passing or anything. It's just, uh, yeah, you have to work hard until you fin uh, finally make it. Thank you. I think we maybe have time for one more question. Okay. What is the question you would like to be asked? What is the question you would ask two years ago from yourself? Ooh, okay. That's a hard question. We need the time to think. <laughs> um. Yeah, that is a hard one. <laughs> yeah. What would I ask myself? Perhaps the real reality of how hard you have to study, because I think many yeah. people do have sort of, not lower expectations, but I think it's easier than it actually will be. And, and I think no one really always emphasizes how actually hard, hard you have to study, how much time do you have to dedicate, mm -hmm. and whether, whether you, have, you can have, I don't know, a part-time job or something like that. Some people usually go like, hey, you, you can, you cannot, but I think the reality is that no, you, should, you shouldn't have it, you should just work hard and always study. And of course you can enjoy life as well, and I don't know, go to parties or have hobbies, but uh, just, yeah, someone needs to say the stronger word that it actually is quite tough, and you ha do have to study mm -hmm. if you want to achieve the best things. And what would be your advice to yourself two years ago? Don't cry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess really, yeah, it's just, uh, just remember that you're, everyone has their own path in SSC Riga. Some people take 
from here more this academic side, the studies. I'm not saying that you should not take this <laughs> from studies here, obviously, but uh, yeah, for some people more here is this academic side, for some others maybe it's this personal development and maybe this failing a uh, hundred times and just uh, getting back up and do it again. You, you have your own experience here and you will learn here what you need to learn here and it's okay that you maybe are not going through the same path that other people are going. And I, I, once I understood that myself, then it started to get easier for me to move forward and to actually be even in some kind of way maybe more successful and yeah. So Thank that's my you. advice. And the last question from the live chat. Um, if I call you up in 10 years, what will you be doing professionally? Yes. Okay. Well, uh, I hope that I will be in politics. We will see how that goes. <laughs> maybe something will change. I mean, we still have several courses ahead of us, so maybe I will fall in love with one of them and then later on find myself in, uh, in this area of working, yeah. Yeah, and I really don't know for sure. I still haven't really figured out what exactly I like yet, but I would like to believe that I could be working uh, maybe have my own business or be part of, uh, I don't know, something to do with media or maybe that sort of stuff. And then, then what I do know is that I will definitely have a good job because if you, if you do finish SSE Riga, it, not always maybe you will find a job that you purely love, but it's going to be a useful and a very good job uh, that you can be proud of and that's what I can definitely uh, answer for sure. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. I feel like I got to know you a little more even. <laughs> Thank you for your answers. Thank you. I wonder if we have any more questions perhaps from the live chat. So I'm just going to check that. If we have time for that. I think, I think this is about it. No more questions are coming up. So. We have talked a lot. <laughs> <laughs> useful information. Um, Thank you for all of you who were watching. We hope you found some answers. If you have any more questions, please get in touch with us. Um, I should tell you that the application portal opened today. So if you're not a procrastinator, Never. at least start your application and put down your name. You can always get back to it later. And do check out our website and get in touch. If you feel like you want to visit the school, it is possible. Uh, and you can apply for shadowing a student and he or she will show you around. Um, and we also have a dedicated group of student ambassadors from very different backgrounds and countries who would be happy to answer your questions. So check them out on our website. They are our uni buddies. Um, any last comments? No, we'd apply to SSC Riga. <laughs> Hope to see you soon here in real life. Goodbye. Thank you.